Hello friends, this video on isolation of elements part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So we have to give the difference between roasting and calcination. So roasting is what? Roasting is uh, converting my sulphides to oxide. Sulphide to oxide. That is my roasting in uh, regular supply of air. and at temperature below melting point right for example i have zns use heat with air you need to get zno so this is my roasting or i have you have pbs heat in the presence of air you get pbo and so you can write the balance reaction this is zinc blind this is galena or you can take copper glass Cu2S, you get Cu2 and SO2. So these are all my roasting. In both in roasting, we just heat temperature at the temperature below melting point in the regular supply of air, sulfide converted to oxide. In calcination, what we do is we use limited supply of air. Limited or no supply of air. Supply of air. Temperature is again below melting point. Right. So in this, my hydroxides or carbonates or will be converted to oxide, and also the volatile matters will escape. One is the volatile matter escapes, and the second is carbonate or hydroxides get converted to oxide, metal oxide. For example. You have a two O three dot X H two O. Let's suppose you heat this high temperature, you get Fe two O three plus this water molecule goes out. So if you see, this is a volatile component, volatile metal. It it went out. You have example of zinc carbonate. Let's say X O three. Yeah, zinc carbonate. When you heat this, it becomes zinc oxide and carbon dioxide. And zinc carbonate is called calamine, and this is Fe2O3XH2O is limonite. So there is the difference between calcination and roasting. In one, roasting is in presence of air; calcination is in absence of air. In both cases, the temperature is below melting point. In case of roasting, we convert sulfide to oxide. In case of um, calcination, we remove the volatile matters or we convert carbonates or hydroxides to oxide. What is the difference between pig iron and cast iron? So this is uh, my pig iron directly what you get from furnace, and this is my cast iron. So blast furnace directly you get this pig iron that is four percent carbon and impurity. Impurity can be sulfur, phosphorus, silicon, uh, like this. manganese cast iron is actually obtained by melting pig iron and it has 3% carbon they are hard and brittle right so you have cast iron or you have pig iron from this you can make cast iron by actually melting and removing some impurity and decreasing the carbon concentration what is the role of cryolite in the metallurgy uh, uh, metallurgy of aluminum so we have seen that cryolite actually decreases the melting point of the mixture this cryolite decrease this is my cryolite to decrease the melting point of my molten al2o3 also it increase the conductivity of the whole solution of again molten al2o3 so that is the two role for cryolite because we for since this electrolytic process we need the whole molten metal to be conducting and thus 
this cryolite helps to increase the electrical conductivity of Al2O3 and also it decreases the melting point of this mixture. And the original melting point is uh, 2323 Kelvin and it reduced this melting point to 114, 1140 Kelvin actually, almost half, or more than half actually. How is leaching carried out in case of low grade copper ores? So I told that I've explained this actually leaching is carried out using acid in the presence of air. For example, I have Cu and some H plus medium in the presence of air. What you get is Cu2 plus. And so this is what you get. And this resulting solution is treated with again scrap of iron or hydrogen to get the metallic copper back. So once you have Cu2 plus, you can treat with iron scrap or hydrogen to get this copper back. So this is my impure and this is little pure. You can use again electrolytic refining to make it pure. Why is zinc not extracted from zinc oxide though reduction using CO? Let's see this. Where is the zinc to zinc oxide? This is the line. And reduce reduction using CO. Where is CO to CO2? CO to CO2 is this line. So if you see they are not meeting. Since they are not meeting, zinc. Zinc can actually reduce carbon, but carbon, uh, zinc can actually reduce carbon dioxide, but carbon monoxide will not be able to reduce zinc because zinc lies in the lower range. Correct. Also, if you want to see from the Gibbs energy level, you can uh, find the value of uh, G at any temperature and you will see that the net reaction G comes out to be positive. The net reaction is I am saying this reaction, ZNO Gibbs zinc and CO gives CO2. You add this to reaction, the net delta G is always positive at any temperature because these lines are not intersecting actually. This is true for all temperature. There is no intersection. So just by looking at this uh, Lingam uh, graph, we can see that zinc cannot be extracted using carbon monoxide. The next is the delta G for the formation of Cr2O3 is minus 540 kilojoule per mole and that of Al2O3 is minus 827. Is the reduction of Cr2O3 possible with Al? That means reduction of Cr2O3. That means Cr2O3 will form Cr. Correct. And with aluminium, that means aluminium will form Al2O3. The question is, is this reaction possible? So let's see. Delta G for the formation of Cr2O3 is this. That means delta G for this will be what? Plus 540 kilojoule per mole because we have flipped the reaction. This reaction minus 540 is from for Cr to Cr2O3. And aluminium to Al2O3 is given minus 827 kilojoule per mole. You add this, what you get is minus 287 kilojoule per mole. Since it is negative, that means yes, it is. This reaction is feasible. Thus, I can say that reduction of Cr2O3 is possible with aluminium. The question is out of C and CO, which one is better reducing agent for zinc? So, ZNO, let's draw this line first. Let's see. CO. CO it becomes CO2, this is the line. So now if you see the reaction of CO or C, let's see for the C first. For the C, carbon plus oxygen is equal to carbon monoxide. This is the reaction. And they intersect at this temperature. If you talk about the reaction of CO, CO plus O2 is this guy. And they don't seem to intersect. Maybe they'll intersect somewhere here. So that means 
coke or C can be used as a reducing agent to reduce zinc oxide to zinc at a temperature of 173 Kelvin while carbon monoxide can reduce zinc oxide to zinc at a higher temperature almost 1873 Kelvin. Thus carbon is a better reducing agent. Better reducing agent for this reaction. I have ZNO from this I want to make zinc. For this reaction carbon is a better reducing agent. The question says the choice of reducing agent in a given case depends on the temperature thermodynamics factor. How do you agree? A good example is this case. If you see temperature below this that is I think almost 13 50 degree Celsius right temperature below this in fact my mg can reduce aluminum oxide temperature above 1350 if you see this is my aluminum my aluminum can reduce mgo so again it all depends on temperature right so temperature less than this element x was reducing y temperature more than 1350 element y is reducing element x so the temperature plays a critical role here a good example was this one aluminium and magnesium in the name the process from which chlorine is obtained as a byproduct so what will happen is the aqueous solution of NaCl is subjected to electrolysis so we have to name the process in which chlorine is obtained as a byproduct. So I have NaCl that gives me Na plus and Cl minus. Right? If I do a electrolysis of this, what will happen is at cathode, reduction will take place. Na plus will get converted into Na by taking electrons. At anode, oxidation will take place by chlorine will get converted into chlorine gas and will emit electrons right thus if you see chlorine gas is emitted so this is the process in which chlorine gas is emitted now what will happen is aqueous solution of NaCl that means you are adding water to it and I am subjecting that to electrolysis so what will happen is anode reaction will remain same but at cathode reaction will change cathode now instead of Na plus getting uh, reduced my water molecules will take electron and become hydrogen gas and OH minus so hydrogen gas will come out my anode reaction will be same chlorine gas Cl minus will become chlorine gas right so that is the difference in this case the role of graphite pro in electrometallurgy of aluminium See, graphite rod is used as anode. See here, these are used as anode. Here, oxidation take place. Right? Because at cathode, the reduction will take place. See, at cathode, what will happen is I have Al3 plus in this pink one that will get reduced to aluminum. At anode, this is the anode, carbon will become C plus 2 and also will become C plus 4 that is CO and this is CO2 so anode oxidation will take plus carbon will get oxidized and in cathode my aluminium will get reduced right now instead of carbon if I use metal as anode what is the problem if I use metal as anode if metal is used as anode then what happens then it will liberate oxygen gas right it will liberate oxygen gas at anode and this oxygen gas will oxidize my metal for example aluminium will oxidize aluminium and you will get back again al 2 or 3 and that is something you don't want because the whole process the whole challenge and the whole reason why we are doing this process is we have to convert aluminium oxide to aluminium correct if 
and using a metal oxygen is liberated and this oxygen will oxidize aluminium and form Al2O3 and also this graphite rods are cheaper than metal right so we use graphite rod precondition under which aluminium might be expected to reduce MgO aluminium here Mg will reduce aluminium but after this I think this is aluminium right this line and this is Mg so aluminium will reduce MgO at temperature above this range and this is 1350 degrees Celsius right 1200 is this 1300 so it's 1400 this is almost 1350 degrees Celsius so at temperature above 1350 degrees Celsius my aluminium should reduce MgO. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get pre-study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.